This evening's scripture we'll be reading Genesis 3, verse 1 through 6. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither ye shall touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and to the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of it, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, which her and he did eat. Have you thought about the fact that men are so often displeased with God? That may sound like a strange statement to you, but it is true that men are often displeased with God. And how unfortunate that is, because Romans 5 and verse 6 tells us, when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure some would even dare to die. But God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Being much more than justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Romans 5, 6-9 through What a beautiful statement of the pity, compassion, and mercy of God. John 3.16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. How could man reject such compassion? How could man reject such love? Such concern. Such benevolence. How could man simply look away from it? In Matthew 11.28, Jesus Christ said, Come unto Me, all you that are laboring or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn of Me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Why would man turn away from that? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, as Solomon summarized life, he said, Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That's the reason we're on earth. That's the reason we were created. That's the reason we are here. So often people ask, why am I here? That's the reason. To glorify God. To live for your Creator. And how unfortunate that men are displeased with God. Did you know men have been displeased with God from the very beginning? In Genesis 3, God had given man everything he could possibly need and want. Everything was right there. God gave him one negative command. Do not eat from this one tree. And yet Eve, seduced by the devil, partook of the one fruit that God asked them not to partake of. Gave it to her husband and he did the same. They were displeased with God. 
they must have thought some way God had restricted their lives so they could not be happy by giving them this commandment. Men often think they cannot be happy if they keep God's command. And so often I've heard people say, well, this is not fair, and this is not fair, and this commandment is not fair. Do we not understand God has given these commandments for our own welfare? Do we not understand that His commandments are for our own good? Do we not understand that His commandments come from His love and compassion? And thus to keep His commandments is the very best life anyone could live. And yet most people reject it. In 1 Kings chapter 12, the people of God, the Israelites, have now unfortunately divided into two different nations. Israel in the north, Judah in the south. Judah in the south is ruled by the son of Solomon, Rehoboam. Israel in the north is ruled by a man by the name of Jeroboam who had been away in Egypt because he had a problem with King Solomon. But at the death of Solomon, Jeroboam returns and now he is leading. What an opportunity. What a time to say, let's return to God. What a privilege to lead God's own people. And it could have been so wonderful. He could have said, let's go back to the ways of God. We've fallen away. Let's get rid of oppression and all these politics among God's people, and let's just live for God. But Jeroboam was not pleased with God. He was another individual displeased with God. God had said that His children were to worship in Jerusalem at the temple. Jeroboam set up calf worship in the north and in the south, And he says, these are the gods that have brought you out of Egypt. And God's people went into idolatry. Not pleased with God. So they do it their way. Then God sends His own Son. The greatest gift God could ever give to humanity. His own precious Son the most beautiful person who has ever lived, the kindest, most compassionate, most beautiful human being who's ever lived on this earth, they were not satisfied. Jesus was not what they expected. They were displeased with God. And so they killed His own Son. Acts 2, verse 36. On that beautiful day of Pentecost when Christ's church began, Peter stood up and he said these beautiful words, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. They rejected God. We see it down through history. We see it all through the Bible. We must understand to reject God is rebellion. It's rebellion against our very Creator. It's to go against our own existence. It's so foolish. And yet the majority have chosen to be displeased with God. Do you know how people are displeased with God? They are displeased with His Word. This shouldn't surprise us. If they're displeased with God Himself, they're going to be displeased with the words that come from God. 
And they truly are. Men are displeased with God's Word. How unfortunate. 2 Peter 1 verse 3, According to His divine power, He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that called us to glory and virtue. In this Word is contained life and godliness. We can have glory and virtue. And men aren't happy with that. What more could we ask? Yet men are not happy with it. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 It's God-breathed. It originated with God. Yet men are not happy with it. They're displeased with it. Exceedingly displeased. John 6.63 Jesus says, The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And men aren't happy with those words. John 12, 49, Jesus says, The words you hear me speak, they're not my own, but His that sent me. Whatsoever I hear, that's what I speak. And I know that His commandment is life everlasting. John 12, 49 and 50. His commandments are not cold and lifeless and legalistic. Jesus said it's life everlasting. Life everlasting in the commandments of God. People are not pleased with it. Let me just give you a few examples. In our day, the big rage today is that anybody can love who they want to. Our president and Hillary Clinton has made this such an issue in our land that anybody can love anybody they want to love. And what people don't understand they think that's very broad-minded and very loving and very tolerant that destroys God's view of marriage in the Bible Hillary Clinton Barack Obama and thousands throughout our country are displeased with what the Bible says about marriage. God said it right in the beginning. Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Bruce. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. And that's the way God wants it as long as this earth stands. And if everybody in America is opposed to it, that doesn't change God's Word. You can call it tolerant, loving, you can call it anything you want to. What it is, is America is displeased with the Bible. They are displeased with God's Word. It is not loving. It is not tolerant. It is ignorant. It is wicked. It is shameful. And yet those who would say that homosexuality activity is sinful are looked upon as bigoted, as unloving, and they may even take away our tax-free status if I keep saying it. And those who are supposed to be so tolerant are really intolerant. They are intolerant of God. 
They are intolerant of the Bible. Romans 1, 18 through the end of the chapter, could not be more clear that homosexual activity is sinful. That it is a disgrace. And yet, even those in the religious world say, oh, I'm not going to judge. What about what the Bible says? What about what God says? Men are displeased with God. So they reject these passages. 1 Corinthians 14.37 In the early church in Corinth, they had a problem. When the assembly is worshiping God, people are not supposed to disrupt that assembly. That's sinful. That is a sin. What was happening in the church in Corinth? One person would get up and speak, and then another person would get up and speak at the same time. That's not only rude and ignorant, that's sinful. It is sinful. And that's what it means when it says all things are to be done decently and in order. That's talking about in the assembly. People are not supposed to be talking at the same time. But people were just standing up talking. One would stand up and another would stand up before the other one finished. And Paul explained that's wrong. And then even in their assembly, then a woman would stand up and start teaching. Well, is it okay for a woman to preach? Well, these denominations have women preachers. Surely they can't be wrong. They're good women. They do good things. They say some Scriptures. The very idea that a woman would stand up and address the people of God in the public worship assembly is rebellion against God. It's not my opinion. It's not what I feel. It's what the Bible teaches. But men are displeased with that. So we have women preachers. And people defend it. People are displeased. with the church and the Bible. They're displeased with it. Because it's God's church. And they're displeased with God, so they're displeased with His church. Membership is required for one to go to heaven, and yet people have come along and said, well, no, you can be a member of a lodge or a fraternity or... You can just do good things and go to heaven and not be a member of any church. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches saved people are in the church. Acts 2.47 Who did God add to the church? Those who were saved. But man is not pleased with that. We we don't want to say that. We want to say, well, well, don't, don't be so quick and... Don't judge, and we we want to do it our own way. God has said this is the way it is. Men are displeased with that. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. And yet someone says, well, Martin Luther started my church. Or John Wesley started my church. Jesus said upon this rock, I will build My church. Not some man's church. And yet, people are displeased with Christ's church. And so now we have churches that have been started by human beings. 
and they admit it. They'll tell you, well, John Wesley started this denomination. Martin Luther started this denomination. They'll tell you that. Why can't they just be satisfied with the church that Jesus built, not by any human being, and just go back to the Bible and be that church? Why? Because they're displeased with God. Men are displeased with God. They don't want to do it God's way. We want to do it our way. Our way seems better. It's not. What do you read in the Bible? In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul talks about two historical events in, in history. The resurrection of Jesus and His exaltation to the right hand of God. And he explains how that shows the power of God when Jesus was raised from the dead and set at God's own right hand. And in the last two verses of chapter 1, he explains, God set Him at His own right hand and He gave Him to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Now what did he say? Well, he tells us clearly that God set Christ over all things to the church. Made Him to be the head over all things to the church. We're not satisfied with that. I met a guy the other day who told me, let me tell you about the head of our church. And he had this little brochure and it had this little picture of this good looking man. He said, This is the head of our church. God gave Christ to be head over all things to the church. Ephesians 1 21, 22, and 23. And yet we have made some man the head of our church. There's no provision in the Bible for any pope, for any council, for any synod, for any group of men, for any convention to head Christ's church. He's the only head of the church. In Matthew 28, 18, He said, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. There's not room for a pope or a synod or a council. But people are not satisfied with that. They're not satisfied with the Word of Christ. And so as a result, churches have added human creed books and disciplines and prayer books and missiles and all of these books written by some man or group of men that tell you what to believe and that tell you how to worship. Why can't we get our doctrine from the Bible? Why can't we just believe what the Bible teaches? Because men are displeased with God. They're displeased with His Word. They're displeased with His church. They're displeased with everything about God. In Ephesians 4, verse 4, He tells us in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, the body is the church. And in Ephesians 4, verse 4, He says clearly, there is one body. The body's the church, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Ephesians 4, verse 4, there is one body. We're not happy with that. So we have hundreds of churches. Hundreds. Just in America. Men are not happy with God. They're displeased with God. I 
I was in the gym the other day, a real nice fellow in there. And he walked up and he gave me this little piece of paper and he said, I'd like you to read this. I said, sure, I'll read it. I got the car and I opened it up and you know what it says? It says, friend, are you lost? All you have to do is invite Jesus into your heart and you'll be saved at this moment. Did you know that's what nearly all the religious groups in America are telling people? They're not satisfied with God's Way. God's Way doesn't say invite Jesus into your heart and you'll be saved. There's not a passage in the Bible where an alien sinner was ever told to do that. Not even one passage. What the Bible does say when people ask, what shall we do? They were told, turn away from your sins and be immersed. To have your sins forgiven. But now who wants to be told that? Who wants to be told you have to change your whole life? Who wants to be told you've got to turn away from all you're doing that's wrong and be immersed to have your sins forgiven. That's God's way in Acts 2 verse 38 and Acts 22 16. And you can accept God's way right now.